Okay, so I'm going to be comparing these two headsets here. The well, technically this is the Color Cross, but <clears throat> it's by a different company. It's the same headset though. So basically, it's the Color Cross, same exact headset, and the Homido uh, virtual reality headset. Um, I upgraded over this to the Homido. It's definitely an upgrade. I'm going to be talking about them individually right now. Okay, so here's the, well, it says Easy Life, but we're going to call it the Color Cross. Uh, so some of this, uh, it's, so it's got, you know, a bigger FOV than the Google Cardboard. However, some things that I found to be an issue with these he this headset is that you could see the walls inside of the headset and they are glossy so the light reflects from your phone off of the inside of the headset so that really removes a lot of the immersion and on top of that you can see the, the, the sides and the top and bottom of your screen so that really kills it so it's almost like you're looking down a tunnel with light bouncing around and then there's a 3D image in front of you somewhere and you really have to try your hardest to try to feel immersed in the uh, VR experience and you know that's that kind of sucks um, after a while you have a strap here yeah goes over the top of your head and sides but after a while there was some foam in here some kind of foam which I wish they used here uh, like foam some kind of foam uh, there was something in here that held your phones from falling out of, out of the headset but that just like deteriorated really fast and then every time I put my phone in here it just slides out and I risk breaking my phone in fact I'm su surprised my phone actually still is in good condition because it has hit the floor a few times because of this headset um, I have had to do some modifications to raise the comfort level of the phone of the the headset uh this nose piece was really freaking sharp and and really hurt your nose a lot i filed it down a bit uh to get it kind of smooth but it's still painful to use uh it's hard and it and it rests on your nose very uncomfortably uh, especially at the bridge of your nose here um then it has this uh piece of like rubber gasket around here instead of like foam and it's just might as well be nothing at all because it really does not it doesn't really help any it's it jams into your face and like puts lines all over your face so you end up with red lines on your nose and your face and everything and you may end up feeling a little awkward if you have to go out and you have all these red lines all over your face uh, so that's, that's a bad thing. Um, the lenses can move, like forward and backwards, you know, forward, side, side, whatever. You have to screw it out a bit to get it to be towards your eyes and screw it in to be closer to the screen. Now, the screen of the phone is way too far from the lenses, so that's why you end up seeing like the, uh, you end up seeing more of the, the sides of the screen, top and bottom and everything. And um, if you put it closer to your eyes, you'll, uh, you'll see more of the screen. I noticed a bit more of a 3D effect when it was closer to my eyes, but you'll see more of the sides of the screen. Then when you push it back, there's less of a 3D effect and less of the, the screen, but there's still the sides and, and top and bottom of the screen is still there, and it's kind of annoying. Um, so, the lenses will screw out. Um, I was able to see from this eye, and it created an annoying effect. From this eye, I was able to see this side of the screen, and it created this oddball effect that drove me crazy. Um, it was like almost like a line. It's, it's hard to explain. It's like a, this weird line. And there was no centering your phone. There was nothing. There was nothing you could do to get rid of that annoying effect. 
So you could maybe reduce it, but you really couldn't get rid of it. And that was annoying. Um, so that's that. Actually, at one point, because if you see, well, let me show it. In here, there's this, it's hard to, hard to actually point it out, but in here I can stick my finger, like, up through there. And you could see through that. That's what you were able to see through. And at one point I actually stuck something there to get rid of that annoying effect, but it just kind of annoyed me when I was using the headset, so I just removed it because it was getting in the way of trying to adjust everything. So that kind of that kind of ruined things. So yeah, um What else could I say about this? Um Not much positive. I mean, I guess you get if you it's it may be better than Google Cardboard simply because you get a better field of view. But uh, I mean, I guess it's cheap as well. Um, if I was going to base VR on this headset, on my experience with this headset, I would say it was boring as hell. I would say it was... not. I mean, not maybe not the most... It was cool at first. The first time I saw it, I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. And then I, after a little while, I was like, all right, whatever. Um, this kind of blows. If this is what VR is like, eh... So, it was like, it's cool, but I had to, like, force myself to feel immersed in the experience, which, yeah, this wasn't that great, and it's very uncomfortable, and, um, the only thing is it's cheap, um, and I guess it's better than Google Cardboard, but it's very uncomfortable, and I really didn't, really don't like it, that's why I wanted to upgrade and try something better. All right, so now we go to the Homido headset, which I recently purchased. So we have a better field of view in the Homido headset. This is like the DK2 um, lenses we have here, basically, the size uh, of the lenses. A whole bunch of different uh, cups for the lenses for different uh, eyesight uh, stuff, whatever. Then we have actual foam around here. This is foam, not um, that whatever, that rubber. Um, a lot of people have said that you cannot remove this, but I'm going to prove that wrong by removing it. And, yeah, so it can be removed. There's a little piece of plastic on there, and you just remove it from there. So, that's that. So you can clean it. So you don't have to have sweaty, uh, a sweaty piece of foam that smells like shit on you. Um, so you can clean it. I, don't, I actually haven't cleaned it yet. So I gotta do that. Uh, so it wouldn't hurt. I just gotta figure out how you're supposed to clean it. I'll just like wipe it or something? I don't know. But I'd like to clean it in a way that's actually not going to make it smell more. Because sometimes if you try to wipe it, I would imagine it may end up smelling kind of like a mildewy, disgusting, putrid, vile smell. And that's that. Uh, but if you have noticed, if you do notice, right here, I cut this. Right here and here, off this this plastic right here, it was too um, sharp, and it dug into my nose, making it very uncomfortable to use. So I couldn't even use this. Uh, it, it was easier to actually use this Color Cross headset for longer than the Homido headset, just because it had those sharp things digging into my nose. So I removed those, kind of smoothed it out with a sanding block so that it wouldn't do that. And now it's fairly comfortable to use. It's just that gouging, uh, sharp friggin' thing. There drove me nuts. Okay. So, some of the negative points about this. More light seeps in to this, and I actually didn't mention this. This allows light to seep in, like, through, you know, these little kind of holes here where they have the, where you can do this, yeah. So basically light will seep in through here a little bit. Not not terribly, but it it's easily to, it's easy to ignore, especially if you turn the lights out, it's okay. Um, so that's a plus for this. But this, as far as this goes, there's a lot of light that seeps in, especially in the nose area. The nose area 
has a huge part where your nose, I, it's to help you breathe, I guess, but you can see the light coming in through here and also through these, the holes where the straps go, uh, you'll be able to see some light in there. But to its defense, I actually, normally you're focusing on in the eye area here and your phone is there and you're focusing on what's going on in there, so in the 3D world, and you normally don't notice the light. You just normally are completely distracted by what's going on in the headset. However, if you do get a little, you can become focused on the light and be annoyed by it. Uh, and it's more light than is let in with the, uh, with the color cross. So that's kind of annoying. Um, trying to think of other annoyances this headset has, because all in all, it's a good experience. Oh, I was in fact able to see, now this is mostly for five inch devices. You can use it with bigger devices, but, you know, they, um, a lot of people have experienced where the screen is cut off, so those devices are actually too big. Even though you can put it in here, it cuts off the screen. Um, so that's that. But I have seen a slight amount of the sides of the screens. Not the top and bottom, but the sides every now and then, depending on the app. Some, if you have a dark app, a lot of times you don't notice it because the sides of, well... It depends on your phone, but my phone is black. So the size of the screen in, in a dark app, you don't notice it. Um, and like, yeah, that's that. Uh, what else? So because the, the phone is now closer to your eyes, you don't have like, you don't have this, the immersion is really good. Um, it's very believable. Um, apps that you may not have liked in the past may end up becoming really good. Um, a few uh, roller coaster apps that I now really like, which I didn't really care for before. Um, the high, bigger field of view is nice, so you have more. You see more of the screen is covering your your eyes. Your, you know, you just have a bigger field of view, and you can not see the edge of the screen so clearly. You don't see the insides of the. Uh, the walls of the screen or, or the walls of the, the headset or anything like that. There's no like glossy uh, light bouncing around in there. Um, and of course you have the adjustments that you can make. So I can take this and I can make this further from, you know, I can come out like that and pull it in so I don't have to like screw the, the lenses in and out and have them end up falling out because I screwed them out too too much. You have the dial on top which uh, will change the positioning of the eyes like that. Um, definitely more comfortable to wear once you, like I said, modify it. Um, hmm. It's got like these kind of holes. This is supposed to, I guess, help not fog up the lenses but I still get, the, the lenses still fog up. So that's, that's still an issue. Putting the phone in here is a pain in the ass. Um, especially if you have to launch your app and try to get it in there as fast as humanly possible to, um, to get your, uh, what is it called? To get your app running properly. Um, you'll basically have to be, do a speed thing where you, you know, when this is really tight, it's not gonna drop your phone. That's a good, that's a plus side, but, and I can fit it in with the case I have on my S4. So I can pull it out really far like that, but it's, it takes a lot of force to pull out and trying to put your fragile phone in there when you're doing this is, it's a little frustrating. So that's a little annoying. And I think they could have done a better job with that. Um, there's no magnet. Both of these have no magnet though. So none of these have a magnet. You can use a magnet around your house. I have a magnet that I keep with it normally, and I can just swipe the magnet and it works that way. Um, for the most part, this is a huge upgrade as far as immersion goes, um, comfort, everything. Um, like I said, the only thing you gotta do is there's a, you know, you probably should 
you're gonna have to like mod it. It feels like you shouldn't have to. I mean, it feels like why did you wear this before you actually sold it? But you know, you can do a slight modification and get it very comfortable on your head. And the immersion is excellent. Um, you have a nice field of view, um, with especially for five inch devices. It's nice for upgrade to a five from a five inch when you have a five inch uh, phone, because with this, like I said, I saw. Uh, the sides of the screen, the top and bottom, it really removed you from the experience. Whereas this, you really don't have that problem, and it really feels, it very much feels like you're there, and um, that's a lot better. I have not tried PC gaming with this or using um, what the hell it's trying this VR with this device. Um, I'm not really that big with uh, using this with PC gaming or even games in general. I actually like just apps. Um, I like the, the, you know, the apps on the Play Store. I like apps more than games, when this, which I was surprised because I thought I would like games more than apps. But, yeah, the apps I like, they're... Um, with uh, streaming, you tend to get this little bit of a... Um, bit of a, what's it called? A delay, like uh, latency issues. Uh, so when you turn your head, it makes it very hard to be immersed in an application when you have, like, latency when turning your head, like, bad latency. And, of course, a lot of the times you're using, like, this mouse emulation, and it's not very realistic. And it has, like, this acceleration a lot of times where the, the mouse will throw itself, kind of, and it makes it, it really, it's frustrating to try to use. Uh, outside of there are a couple apps that actually support uh, true head tracking and stuff. So, you know, Trinus VR also supports uh, real head tracking uh, methods. No, no, uh, you know, positional tracking, but uh, you can move your head around and stuff, whatever. Um, so for the most part, I, when using these apps, I was really happy with it. Uh... Can I recommend this as an upgrade? Okay, if you're dying to upgrade right now, then yes. However, if you can wait, Seymour, company who makes a lot of cool virtual reality apps in the Play Store, some of the best ones, uh, is actually working on a really nice looking headset and uh, it definitely looks like it could take this and piss on it because, yeah, it just looks really cool. And I think it's the same price, if anything. Well, uh, I paid less than, than the actual full price for this. So it's probably more now. Uh, but I think, I, I, I don't want to quote the price because I don't remember 100%, but their headset looks really nice. It has its own built-in sensors. It has screens for gaming. I don't know if it has if the sensors work with gaming, like virtual reality, or if they're just like to strap a fucking monitor or something, or a big try to make it look like there's a big screen on your head, or if it actually works with tracking and all that. Um, not sure about that, but the the headset itself looks really nice, and like I said, it has the built-in sensors. So if you um, if you're having drift issues. Uh, it should correct those drift issues, and their, I know their apps are going to support those sensors, and their apps are really good, so um, that I would have to recommend over this, but if you're really dying, you have to upgrade now, I could say get it, just, you know, I would definitely recommend holding out, but don't, don't buy Seymour's right away, wait for someone else to do that, maybe me. <laughs> And then find out maybe it sucks. I don't know. Maybe it would suck more than this and find out that you should have bought this anyways. But for the most part, I, find, I think you should wait. But this is a huge improvement over the Color Cross or Easy Life. What do you want to call it? Same shit, different day. Um, yeah, like I said, so if you can hold out, if you can't, this is actually a really good option and is a huge upgrade over this thing, which, this is like a toy compared to this, well, they're technically both toys, but whatever, you know what I mean, this, this is basically shit compared to this, and if you, um, if you, uh, 
if this was your uh, idea of mobile VR and how good it could get, then you're probably going to think it can only suck. Whereas if you use this, you'll be like, you'll be probably blown away. And if this is your first headset, then you'll really be blown away. Um, so definitely, this is well worth the money I paid for it. It could be better. But I didn't pay that whole $99 that they're charging, and it's a lot more comfortable. Better immersion, blah, blah, blah. So thank you for watching, and see you again later.